Okay, so this is just going to be a pretty basic walkthrough of how to get started in Escape from Tarkov, uh, talking through the various aspects of your character, your inventory, the traders, and then walking through putting you into a uh, solo game, basically. You won't be able to keep the items in a solo game, but it's still worthwhile to practice playing against bots and also to learn the maps. So going over your character, obviously, you have your earpiece, which is Comtax. Uh, there are various versions of Comtax in-game. Uh, you can see this is Comtax 2. You have razors that can be worn. They can only be worn with specific headgear. Uh, some helmets prohibit them, some, uh, some helmets allow them, and then you can also have like hats and various things. Your face mask, face cover here, it is a variety of various items as well as Halloween masks sometimes. Uh, they sometimes prohibit you from wearing a helmet or a helmet prohibits you from wearing anything on your face. Not super important because it doesn't provide any armor attributes or anything like that. Your eyewear, you can have uh, various pieces of eyewear that stop you from uh, receiving shrapnel to the face, uh, well, to the eyes. And while not largely effective, uh, mostly used as a fashion statement. Your body armor, starting out, you'll have access to uh, Paka. Paka, if you double click an item, you can see uh, various stats about it. So it has 50 armor points and it's a class two armor. Class two armor is very low. It goes up to uh, class six, I believe, being the heaviest. Uh, the material is Aramid and it changes your movement speed, turning speed, and your ergonomics, as well as covers two armor areas, thorax and stomach. So your thorax and stomach correspond to these two health pools. At any point, if your health here, 440, reaches zero, you die. If your thorax loses all 85 points of health and then you take additional damage to your thorax, you die. If your head reaches zero health, even if the rest of you has some health, if your head reaches zero and you take any damage, you die. However, simply reaching zero with your head or thorax does not necessarily mean you die, which is more complex than is needed for this explanation, but I thought I'd mention it. Uh, you also have your melee weapon here. You can put pistols into your holster, and then you have your secondary weapon uh, if you wanted to have one. This, by the way, is a Christmas gift that was given to all players. Or sorry, it's a New Year's gift, I guess, uh, that was given to all players. I don't think you can still uh, get it from their website, but if you have it, it's great, and you should go on their website and claim it, because the gift also comes with this ammo box. Which is super useful, because you can put tons of ammo in it, but you cannot put magazines. So, you also have your rig, which you should have your ammo, or sorry, your magazines in, since when you reload a weapon, it comes from your rig. It will not be useful if it's in your backpack. However, your ammo can be anywhere since once you start to refill a magazine, you simply drag the ammo from wherever it is to the magazine you want to refill, and it inserts ammo over the course of a period of time until the magazine is full. You have three primary currencies in game. You have rubles, euros, and dollars. You'll start out with a certain amount of money depending on the pack or version of the game you have. This is my uh, basic version of the game, which is why I have a 2x2 two two pouch here rather than a 3x3 three three or a 3x2. Um, don't take the money into the raid with you, obviously, but still bears worth repeating because some exfils will require you to provide a certain amount of money. So sometimes it's worth bringing in about 15,000 ruples. That's about what an exfil will cost you if you want to use it. Now, when you're gearing up, it's important to make sure your magazines actually have ammo in them. Now, if you right-click a weapon, you have a variety of uh, things you can use here. Going to probably use the reload function most often. But you can also see you can repair items. None of the items you start with are lacking in repair, so you won't need to do that immediately. And you can ensure and various items you can fold in order to make smaller. It does impact the weapon's stats. So before you start using a weapon, you want to make sure it's unfolded. 
Uh, as for meds, you should bring in to every raid, unless you're going in super cheap and don't care if you die, you should bring in at least an AI2, since this is a basic med. It will replenish health if you take damage to any of your limbs or parts. A splint will heal a broken bone. If you have a broken bone and do not have painkillers, then you will walk super slow if the bone is in your legs. There will be an icon directly underneath whatever part of you is broken. Your arms, you'll take a stability penalty, so when you ADS your weapon will sway a lot and your legs will make you move very slow. You can repair that broken or uh, sprained bone with this immobilizing splint. You can also not heal the broken bone and instead use a painkiller in order to minimize the effects. However, you will still receive a slight speed penalty and a pretty significant stability to your weapon sway if you uh, just use painkillers. Bandages will stop light bleeds. You can see here it says stop light bleeds. Light bleeds slowly deplenish your health. Major bleeds quickly deplenish your health. So it's important for you to also bring an Esmarch or equivalent, something that stops heavy bleeds. Now you can quick bind your meds by hovering over an item and pressing the key bind uh, that you want it to bind it to. Personally for me, I usually do a healing item on four, painkillers on five, a bandage on 6, a splint on 7, and a heavy bleed on 8. That's just my personal means of organizing my hotkeys. And then you can see I have my weapons bound. This is, uh, this is misleading. My primary weapon is bound to 1, my secondary is 2, and my tertiary is the pistol. Uh, so this is misrepresented, but whatever. Once you're kitted out with whatever you want to bring into raid, you can go to Escape from Tarkov, choose your PMC, and then choose a map. Most of the quests in the beginning of the game will have you going to customs or woods. So it's highly suggested that you learn one of these maps first. Uh, I recommend customs, but they're both difficult to learn. They're both very large maps. Disregard this rating of insane. It doesn't mean anything. Uh, yeah, it, 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 I have no idea what it means. It doesn't do anything. Then you can choose a time. They're always going to be 12 hours apart. 0300 or 0350 is going to be at the nighttime, and it's dark during the nighttime, so do not accidentally go into a nighttime raid unless you have a flashlight or night vision. So choose daytime, and then you're going to want to, for the first few raids where you're learning the map, you're going to want to enable offline mode for this raid. This will put you into a single server hosted on your own computer with no one else other than the AI. Now you can also choose to uh, have a random weather condition. I don't bother with that because what's the point in learning a map while it's raining? It's the same map when it's sunny. You can choose a random time. Don't bother with this because you want it to be daytime. You're going to want to enable PvE because you're going to have difficulty fighting the bots at first. They are mean. And they also happen to have a very bad habit of seeing you through bushes where you can't see them through, but they can see you because computers suck. Uh, AI difficulty, feel free to turn this up as hard as you want or as easy as you want, but realize that it's not going to be accurate to actually in-game unless it's as in online. Uh, you can enable bosses if you want even more of a challenge. I wouldn't recommend it. Tagged and Cursed is a status effect you as a player will receive um, if you do things wrong in-game. Uh, it basically means that all of the AI know exactly where you are and will hunt and will kill you uh, over time. Like They will actively spawn in and just move towards you like zombies in a zombie game. Don't enable this if you want a realistic impression of what the game is like. So if you did the previous steps correctly, you should have nothing on your screen here. If it has other player names and such, you are in a live lobby and do not want to do that. So you should have nothing here, just a blank square with a picture of your PMC operator, and then you can hit ready up. You'll get into a game much faster than you would uh, if you were on a live server as well, since it, it doesn't actually have to connect to any other players. Alright, we have spawned into the customs map, and as you can see, we're in a building. 
There is no map in game. There is no mini map. There are no icons to delineate friend from foe. So I hope you can communicate well with your buddy if you're playing. Basic controls, WASD, move forward, right click and UADS. Left trigger, or left click, <laughs> fires. I believe the default is B to change firing mode to full auto or single fire. Now I happen to know where we are just because I've played a lot of this game, but you will have no idea where you are. So you will want to find some sort of thing that you can easily identify on maps online in order to figure out where you are. So generally speaking, tall towers or large open fields are good ways of figuring out where you are. You will have to spend a couple of minutes learning just the map by looking at it online before you are even try and guess where you are. Or you can watch YouTube videos of people and learn it that way. That's pretty much how I learned this map. Uh, now a couple of things about moving around the map. Walking through bushes like this will slow you down. You can see in the bottom left hand corner the number of white pips indicate my speed. So as I move into the bush, it slows down. And then as I move out, it jumps back up. Now, whatever your crouch button is, you can hold the crouch button along with your mouse wheel and it will change your stance. So just pressing your crouch button once will crouch you all the way down and pushing it again will put you all the way back up. However, if you hold your crouch button and then mouse wheel down, it will slowly tick you down in height. It also changes, your height, sorry, uh, changes depending on, no, the sound you make while moving depends on your height. So as you're crouched all the way down, if you look at the bottom left hand corner, you can see a speaker symbol with one bar. That means you're as quiet as you can be. And then if you hit whatever your button is to sneak, it goes even quieter. No sound. You will still be making sound, by the way, but, uh, it's as quiet as you can be. It's also as slow and as vulnerable as you can be, so bear that in mind. So, unsneak, and it changes your speed. And that is an AI. Alright, please, sir. Have some respect for the learning individuals. Uncrouch and you move faster. Now, this concept of using the mouse wheel to dictate height and speed also applies to your... Uh, speed at which you move. So instead of just clicking the one button to sneak as fast as possible, you can also just use the mouse wheel, base mouse wheel, without pressing anything in addition to change your speed as it goes up and down. Uh, let me find a good background. There. Now you can see the arrow moving in the bottom left hand corner. So you'll also notice recoil is very significant in this game. Do full auto. Yeah. You're not going to be sniping people cross map or anything like that with iron sights. You probably won't be doing that with snipers either because the maps are fucking large. But you're going to want to, by and large, use single fire mode unless you're at extremely close ranges. Now that being said about recoil control and all of that, if you're firing from the hip, although in this game it's called point shooting, without ADSing basically, you're going to be significantly more accurate than if you're ADSing in that your bullets are going to land in a more precise area. So you have these bullets uh, from me ADSing. By point firing, you can see they stay at least a little bit more on target compared to being a higher up uh, shots like that. So at close ranges, you probably will not want to ADS and just fire uh, point fire like that. Q and E are your default lean buttons. It's slow, but it does also provide quite an advantage if you were to try and fight someone from cover of this door. By leaning out, you're exposing significantly less of your body. However, you do lean more. I am purposefully getting hit so I can show you how to heal. Oh yeah, look at that. Fucking pinpoint precision. What the heck is this guy made out of? Am I insane right now? Okay. Yeah, sure. As I said, AI will kick your ass. 
you can see in the uh, top right corner, I am bleeding. So if I take a bandage, I can drag it to my head where I am bleeding, or I can just use the hotkey. Now, I have stopped bleeding, but I've already lost my head. So if I take pretty much any damage now, I will die. I can also use four in order to heal up my arm that was hit by that guy's shotgun. You can also see I lost slightly a little like a little bit of health everywhere. That's from the bleed. What the bleed does is, is, is diminish your health pretty much from all your points uh, slowly. If it was a heavy bleed, I'd have lost more health over the same course of time. Uh, one, 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 one. If you're like me and you have spent pretty much all of your ammunition of your guns, you might need to refill your mags. So, grab your ammo from your your pouch, if that's where you have it, and drag it over a magazine. As you can see, it slowly fills up. During this time, you cannot use your arms for anything else. You cannot use them to heal, you cannot use them to loot items. Uh, if you exit your menu, it will stop loading that magazine, and you'll have to resume it. By the way, your guy's going to complain like that for the rest of the raid since I've lost a body part. However, you can use painkillers. Using my arms, cancel the loading animation. And that will quiet your guy down as long as the painkillers last. You can see here, painkillers. We set the next 72 seconds, I will be on painkillers. This does change how your eyes work in game, so things may seem a bit brighter, and that's because uh, painkillers of any kind will increase the sharpness of the game. It makes it incredibly shitty to look at through a recording, and especially on stream, so if it looks worse, I apologize. But it's a necessity of uh, living, not hearing your guy complain the whole time. So... By exploring the map, you will earn XP over the course of period over the course of time, and uh, that XP will all contribute at the end of the raid towards your uh, total level. Now, if I remember right, yeah, there's a gym bag here you can search. By the way, I only know where that is because of memory, uh, and not because I can see it. It's dark as hell for me. You're going to find items that you don't know what are unless you investigate. Now you can inspect or examine the items by right clicking them. There's also a keybind that will automatically examine them just by mousing over and pressing that keybind. For me it's middle mouse. I don't remember if I changed that or if it's a custom keybind. Um, or a default keybind, pardon me. So this is an HDD. HDDs are useful for a variety of crafting as well as trading items uh, later. Anyways, uh, once you are in game, you're going to want to get out. So if you double click the O button, it will show you a timer, which is the amount of time you have left in raid before you are MIA. MIA is the same as go dying, so you won't get any of your gear back. So double click it and it will show you where you need to go. All of these correspond to specific points on the map, uh, crossroads, I mean, they should be labeled on whatever online map you're looking at, and they will almost always be on the opposite side of wherever you spawned. So you can use a little bit of deductive reasoning by looking at what your exfils are, looking on a map to see where they are, you can assume you are on the opposite side of that from where you, like, that's where your spawn is, the opposite side of your exfils. And from there, you should move towards wherever your exfil is, fighting scav AI in order to figure out how they fight, how they react to your presence, and various other things. This game has an incredibly long learning curve. You can see right now I can't sprint. That's because I'm out of stamina. The, the green bar at the bottom left corner depletes very quickly when you are low level. The blue bar on top of it is your arm stamina, drained by ADSing as you can see. All of these things come into play when you're fighting in a real battle with a player or with another AI. And I don't even want to talk about bosses right now. They suck. You should also learn keybinds to change what scopes you're using, as well as any tactical devices. For me, I always have T as my tactical device. 
as it makes it very easy to use your tactical. <laughs> tactical devices include lasers or flashlights. Um, they might include rangefinders now. Haven't played this patch enough to actually say if they do or not. Many long-range scopes have variable zoom options as well, which is another keybind you should learn if you're going to use them at all. That being said, at a low level, your uh, options for long-range scopes are exceedingly limited, and you're unlikely to be using them. And that's pretty much the tutorial. I mean, you have to play this game in order to learn it, and you have to play this game a lot and deal with a lot of frustrations in order to learn it. But at one point or another, one point or another, you will eventually do something that you're like, holy shit, that was awesome. I actually know what I'm doing. And then you'll get shit on by someone that knows more than what you know. And you'll realize that you will always have something new to learn. You'll have new shortcuts to learn. You'll have new uh, jump shots to learn. Sorry, not jump shots, but entries into buildings by jumping through windows uh, that are difficult to do. And you'll learn new loot locations, which is the real reason to play this game. Fuck it, Stark. And you'll learn how to kind of multitask <coughs> while looting, managing your health, and everything else. You'll also learn that lots of doors in this game are locked in order to... Ah, it's a sniper scav. Yeah, you'll learn where sniper scavs are, because they're fucking menaces. They rain down terror, and you will never be able to go loot them. Their bodies don't fall down to a point where you actually can. Look at this guy, fan thinking he's fancy with an SKS and a fucking PSO scope. Anyways, you'll learn names for attachments to weapons, and you'll learn an uncomfortable amount of things about weapons, as well as their various ammo types. It's a great game. I love it. I hate it. I love it. 